Hi, welcome to your lesson on transforming reciprocal functions. Last time we looked at what a reciprocal function is. It is a function that takes this form and the graph looks like this. It has two curves and they are separated by asymptotes. There's an asymptote, vertical asymptote at x equals zero, which means the curves approach that line x equals zero from both sides, but never quite reach it. It's like a hole or gap in the graph. There's also a vertical, uh, sorry, a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. We learned uh, that the domain, therefore, is x can be an element of the real number set. So in other words, x can be any value because the graph exists everywhere except x cannot be zero. So it does not exist at the asymptote. And likewise, for the range, y can take on any value, any real number, except it cannot be zero. OK, we also learned that rational or reciprocal functions can take on, this is the basic form, but this number here, which is a 1, can be any number. And that value we call k. It can be 1, 2, 3, any value. And as that number grows, basically the curves move away from the origin. OK, so let's begin with a problem like this, just to take us back to what reciprocal functions look like before moving on. Problem. We have a situation where there are pipes that are open in a swimming pool, letting water into the pool, and the pool is filling up. So as we can see, as we have more pipes that are open to the pool, it takes less time to fill the pool with water. That makes sense. More pipes letting in more water takes less time in total. So let's create a function for the situation. Try it first. OK, one thing you should notice right away is when you take, uh, I'm going to call these the x and y values, so the input the number of pipes, x, and the output, the time to fill the pool, y. So notice when you multiply x and y, for example, 2 times 20 gives you 40. Also, when you multiply the x and y values of the next coordinate, 4 times 10, also 40. 5 times 8, also 40. Whenever you have a relationship like this where when you multiply the x and y values of each coordinate and you get this a constant value, we know it's an inverse relationship or a reciprocal relationship, which will look like this. Now, to find the k value, we just have to find out that value there, the number we get when we multiply those. So to get the k value, we multiply x and y, and we notice it's always 40 here, so our k value is 40. So there's our model. However, I'm going to rewrite this model using the variables from the equation, which are t and p. So instead of y, I'm going to write t, uh, t of p. That means the time it takes to uh, fill the pool based on the number of pipes that are open. So there's our equation. Now use it to answer A and B. So here's A. We know that seven pipes are open, so time it takes to fill when seven pipes are open, you replace seven here and you get 5.7 hours. Question B, it says you know it takes two hours, therefore you replace the time with two hours, and now you're solving for how many pipes that needs to be, and that works out to 20 pipes. Okay, that was a basic problem to get us back into what a reciprocal function looks like. And now let's take a look at transforming reciprocal functions. So here's our basic reciprocal model or function 1 over x. Let's say we created a new one where we did this to f of x. What effect does this have? Well, making the entire function negative means changing all the y values to their negative values. So for example, all these positive y values will be down here now, and all these negative y values will be up here. So that is a reflection over the x-axis. So here's what our equation will look like. The negative have, has been applied, and the graph will look like this. Again, we've reflected over the x-axis, so this has reflected down, and this part has reflected up. There it is. So that's a basic transformation on a reciprocal function. How about this one? What if we do this? Now the negative is applied inside here to x. OK, what are the result of that is reflecting over the y-axis, because this means we're making all the x values negative. Therefore, all these x values here will jump to this side, and all these negative x values will jump to this side. We're reflecting over the y-axis. Rewriting the function looks like this, and it looks like this. Notice, however, that this is identical to the one we just saw when we made the entire function negative, because whether you reflect this down here and this up here, or this like this like this, you get the same result. OK, how about this one? Now we are multiplying the entire function by 3. What effect does that have? Well, that is a trans, uh, sorry, a dilation by a scale factor of 3. And it's a vertical dilation because we're multiplying the entire function. That means we're affecting y values. So it becomes stretched by a factor of 3 up and down vertically. So there's our function. We put the 3 
multiplied by the whole function, which becomes this, because 3 times this 1 over x is 3 over x, and then we have this. So I just mentioned that a moment ago. When we do a dilation like that, we know that this thing will move away from the axis. For example, the coordinate 1, 1 exists on this graph. On this graph, all the y values will be multiplied by 3. Therefore, at an x value of 1, the y is now equal to 3. And the effect of that is like pulling the graph away from the origin. Okay, again, simple transformations to get us started thinking about transformations and reciprocal functions. Let's do this process now. We're going to take the basic reciprocal one. We're going to create a new function by doing this. What is the equation going to look like and what effect is it going to have? Okay, in this case, here's our new g of x function. We've added 2 to the entire function. So that's what we have here. And then the effect of that is a vertical translation up two units. We've added 2 to the entire function. That means we're going up and down on the y-axis, so up two units. So the graph will look like this. Notice we've taken the basic re reciprocal and we've moved it up two units. So now our asymptotes used to be at x equals 0 and y equals 0. Now they are here at y equals 2 because the entire graph moved up two units. So this asymptote that used to be here also moved up two units up to here. And now we have this asymptote remains where it is because the graph did not move side to side. So vertical asymptote x equals 0, horizontal y equals 2. And our domain, therefore, is all x values. Sorry, x values can be all real numbers except for 0. Our range, y can be any real number except y cannot be 2. So always the asymptotes are like the exception to our domain and range. Okay, let's try another one. Try this one. What is the... What are the, where are the asymptotes going to be for this one? Okay, so first you change the function like this, minus 3 to the entire function. That means it's a vertical translation. Again, we're moving up and down, so down 3 units along the y-axis, right? And now to graph that, we can see it moved down. So again, where this asymptote used to be there, now the asymptote is here. At y equals negative 3, because the whole graph moved down. But the x, or vertical asymptote, remained there at x equals 0 and then our domain and our range. Okay, the range is now all real numbers except for y it cannot be negative 3. Okay, try this next one here. What effect does this have? What are the new domain and range? Okay, so this function turns into this. Notice x plus 4 has been substituted into where x is, right? We're not putting, x, we're not putting plus 4 beside the entire function. We're actually replacing x with x plus 4. That's what this means. So this part has become x plus 4. And we know that that shift is a shift left 4 units. When we see x plus 4, it actually means left 4 units. So now to look at the graph, notice our basic reciprocal function has moved to the left 4 units. So now this asymptote, the y asymptote, or the horizontal remains the same, y equals 0, because now we're moving left and right. But the vertical asymptote is now at negative 4, x equals negative 4, because this entire graph moves 4 units over, which means the asymptote also moves 4 units over. So there's our asymptotes, and our domain and range then, our domain, all real numbers for x except for negative 4. And for range, all real numbers except for y cannot be 0. Okay, try this one. In this one, please notice we begin with this function. So this function has already been shifted. We see minus 2 here. So think about what that shift is, and then apply this transformation to it as well. What will the function look like? What is the effect of these transformations? And what are our, uh, what are our asymptotes for this one? Okay, in this case, we begin with this one. We put x minus 3. So we replace this x with x minus 3. So notice it's been replaced here. Now this change here, again, is a horizontal translation, right 4 units, when we see negative we move right, and then this negative 2 means it moves vertically down 2 units, okay? This is affecting y, this is affecting x. So the graph looks like this. Notice the function moved right 3, down 2. So these asymptotes also moved right 3, down 2. So here's our new asymptotes, let's take a look. Uh, if the graph moves right 3, then we have x equals 3 as our new vertical asymptote. And if it moved down 2, we have y equals negative 2 as our horizontal asymptote. That means our domain and range, I think you're seeing the pattern now, x can be all real numbers except for 3, and y can be all real numbers except for negative 2. Make sure for this one, just kind of pause for a moment and under, that you understand all the shifts here. It's important to understand. Okay, here's another one. We begin with this one. 
Again, notice there's already been a shift, and now we're doing this to it. So what happens, and what are our asymptotes? Okay, here's our graph. X has been replaced by negative X, so this X replaced by negative X here. This is a uh, reflection, right? So we have a reflection over the Y axis, and then we also have vertical, vertically up five units because of this. So here's our graph. So it's been reflected over the Y axis, so imagine this moving this way, this moving that way, reflecting that way, that way. So that's why the graph is like this now. And then the shift up five leads to this asymptote at y equals five, whereas this asymptote remains at x equals zero. Okay, so again, flipped over and then shifted up. Domain and range, check those out. Okay, last one here. We begin with this one and do this change to it. What has happened here first and then what effect will this have? Okay, here's our graph, or sorry, our new equation. The negative has been applied to the entire function, so it goes in front of the entire function. We know that negative is a reflection over the x-axis because we're making y values negative. And then we know this one is means a horizontal translation left three units. So here's our graph. It has been reflected. We can see that these curves are in different places. They've been reflected, and then the graph moved left three units. So we end up with a vertical asymptote right here because the whole graph moved left three and horizontal asymptote remains where it is there's our domain there's our range okay try this question based on what we just learned about shifts and transformations and translations see if you can answer this pretty basic problem okay so q value is two because we know if it has a vertical asymptote here we've been learning that this thing here tells us where the vertical asymptote is so if this said x minus 2, it means it had a shift of 2 to the right. So that's why we have the asymptote there. So that's 2. Uh, then using this point, we know that we have the equation now. We know that there's a 2 here in the equation. We can substitute this point for y and for x, which has been done here, and that allows us to solve for p. So then we know what p is. Okay, similar problem. Try this one. Okay, this one has a vertical asymptote also of 3, so we know that B must be 3. It moves 3 units to the right, okay? Then we have our equation. We know it has a y-intercept of 0, 4. So x equals 0 substituted in, y of 4 substituted in. And solving that, you get an A value of 7. And then it says write down the equation of the, vertical, of the horizontal asymptote. You know that will be 7 because now you found out A is 7. And that number, the number that's added to the entire function, right, is your shift, your, your vertical shift, your vertical um, up and down movement right there. Okay, good problem. It puts all the pieces we've been looking at together. How about this one? Identify the horizontal vertical asymptotes of these functions, state their domain and range. Okay, here's an important point. So here we have a simple function. We know looking at this one, based on what we just learned, that this minus 2 means that it's shifted to the right two units. So another way to look at vertical asymptote is you take the denominator of the function, you set it equal to 0, and you solve. This is important. Make sure you note this down. Then we know x equals 2. That's our vertical asymptote. Why are we doing this? Because if the denominator of a, func of a fraction is 0, we know that fraction is undefined. We cannot divide by 0. So that is where the asymptote occurs, when the denominator is 0. There's a hole in the graph there. It doesn't exist there. So we set it equal to 0, and we check what x value makes it 0. And we found out 2, if you take x equals 2 in here, you'll get 0 there. And therefore, you'll have an undefined function. And that is where your asymptote or hole in the graph is. Let's, uh, so there's your horizontal asymptote. Sorry, horizontal is y equals 0, because there has been no shift here. We don't see a number after it, right? Vertical is x equals 2. Here's our domain and range. Okay, try this next one. What about this one? So based on what we looked at here, what is the vertical asymptote of this one? Okay, so you set that equal to 0, and you find out when x equals 2 thirds, this will become 0. So that's your vertical asymptote at 2 thirds. And horizontal, has this moved up and down at all? Do we see a number after here? Nope, no horizontal. So it's just y equals 0. There's that. There's our domain range. Try this last one here. Okay, vertical asymptote, again, set it equals 0. We find that value. Horizontal, this case, is y equals 4 because we can sh see the shift of 4 units up. Great work with that. Make sure you study this carefully, and you are now ready for a practice.